Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. We gotta for sure talk about all of this nonsense that's going on with Keefe D. I mean, my phone has been blowing up. Even my kids, we were like in a group chat, me and the boys. And even, you know, they hit me up like, look, they found the killer Tupac. I'm like, I've been known. Been known Keefe D was behind this. You know, and I talked about this two months ago when his house got uh, raided. And I was telling y'all, this mofo started feeling himself. A lot of people knew that Keefe D was behind this. Not only was he admitting it, he was going on to different podcasts. I think, I don't know if he thought like the statute of limitations was, you know, it just had nothing to do with him and he thought like whoo the coast is clear it ain't 1996 you know what i'm saying like I, I don't know maybe he's old and just was like hey i want clout but this man was doing way too much talking and we all know when you go on to fed tv aka vlad tv you know the authorities are going to come for you after a while now a lot of people are dragging vlad and y'all not don't like vlad because he's the one who took down my instagram page you know what i'm saying hating ass vlad but with that being said i don't think it's really fair to blame him you know even if i don't like somebody i can be fair okay i can be very unbiased i will say this right um and yeah i do have a new instagram page it's verified shout out to my pr kareen appreciate you so follow my new instagram page i think we're like close to sixty thousand. so i'm rebuilding vlad asshole but anyways um a lot of people are blaming him. They're like, oh, he's, he's, you know, he's the police. It's because of him that Keefe D got arrested. I'm going to say this, okay? I don't know what it is with black men going on Vlad TV. You know, I don't know if Vlad allows them to rest in his bosoms. I, I don't know what it is. But it's something about that man's platform that be lulling these dudes to sleep. Where they just feel like they forget the cameras are there. They forget that he's rolling, you know what I'm saying? And they just, you know, he's not a Catholic priest. Why are y'all confessing y'all sins on Vlad's couch? I don't get it. Everybody wants to get mad at Vlad, but Vlad didn't tell y'all to sit on his couch and confess every murder y'all done did in the 90s, all the dope houses y'all done had, all the bodies y'all got in the street. Y'all do that on your own volition. Okay, as much as you know, I don't, you know, I can't blame him for that. You got a lot of people who be chasing clout. The other day, I seen a video. <laughs> uh, I think DJ Academics posted it. A video of little Boosie taking Vlad TV to his home to do like a, I don't know, Vlad TV cribs. So what kind of shit is this? <laughs> I said, you know shit's bad when Vlad is like making appearances at people's houses. And Boosie looks so uncomfortable, like, yeah, uh, th yeah, I built this myself. I built this a custom-built home. This my pool. This my game room. I'm just like, what is this? Y'all would, I mean, just think about it. Vlad would never allow cameras into his home. He, he never would. Because he's smart like that. He'd never let a bunch of hip-hop people know where he lays and the intricacies of his home. I don't know what it is with black men and Vlad. I just, I don't get it. I can't be mad at him. I don't know what it is. But yeah, Bootsy had Vlad all up in his home doing an MTV, you know, Vlad TV tour. All these black dudes and sat on this man's couch like he is, you know, the damn priest at a Catholic church and just confessed everything. A.R. Ab, many more. But now we have old ass Keefe D. And the crazy thing is he was interviewing with Vlad, I want to say, about three months ago. Oh, just running his mouth. I don't care if I go to jail. Take me to jail. Throw away the key. Oh, he was talking tough. I said, okay, why are you talking all that shit? Them police taking notes. They're slipping, you know what I'm saying? They're sipping slow. Oh, he was talking big shit on Vlad TV. I done been in prison about 20 years. You know what I'm saying? What's another 20 more? I done did most of my life in prison anyway.
Hey, West Side. Okay. All right, sir. All right. I said, damn, he talking a lot of shit. <laughs> Three months later, Kiffy D. Home raided by Las Vegas police. I said, yup. <laughs> Running his mouth on Vlad TV. Getting comfortable and shit. So now, you know, I said it a few months ago and I talked about it on my last live stream. I said, he going to jail. Oh, they coming for that ass. They're not raiding him, you know what I'm saying, just to say hello. He's going to jail. Okay? So now it's come out that Keefe D, after 27 years, has been arrested for the death of Tupac. Everybody whose ears are to the streets knew that Keefe D, Orlando Anderson, his nephew, and the other guys that were in the car that night, they're the ones who killed Pac. Now y'all know I'm a conspiracy theorist. I love a good conspiracy. But like I've said over the years, the death of Tupac was behind gang beef. I love Tupac. Everybody knows I'm a huge Tupac fan. I'm such a big Tupac fan. I didn't realize that it rubbed off on my oldest child because he got like, you know, uh, that Tupac poem, a rose, from a, a rose that grew from a concrete. He got that tatted on him. I'm like, damn, I had my kids, you know what I'm saying, like really immersed in Tupac. Like not just the music, but like, you know, his poetry, all that stuff. So I'm, I'm a huge Tupac fan. But again, I'm not biased, you know what I'm saying? When you wrong, you wrong. And unfortunately for Pac, he started getting really, really immersed in gang life on the West Coast. You know what I'm saying? And, and he got immersed in something that he did not need to be immersed in. He should have just kept it about music. But he started taking on this persona. Because if you go back and you really study Tupac, you know, he was a, a theater kid, an arts kid. You know, he wasn't into that type of lifestyle until he created this persona. Okay? There's Tupac, T-U-P-A-C, and then there's, you know, the number two. And the number two Tupac, that was his alter ego, his persona. Remember, Tupac is a Gemini. And most Geminis, they work in duality. So there was always that duality in Tupac fighting. The good, the bad. And so, um, you know, while, like I said, I love conspiracies, and everybody's like, oh, it was the government behind him. You know, he was a, the son of a Black Panther, and, um, you know, they wanted to take him out. He was, you know, Feeney Shakur's last living male heir and all this stuff. Okay, all right. No, he was, you know, started claiming gangs and, you know, antagonizing gangs, and he saw Orlando Anderson, and Orlando Anderson was the one who had jacked one of the death row dudes. He jacked his chain at the mall. And so when Tupac seen him, that had nothing to do with Tupac. But he was like, that's the dude that had, you know, the dude told Tupac, that's the guy who jumped me at the mall and took my death row chain. Because it was in the 90s. When everybody was, not everybody, but you know, a lot of people were gang banging. And you know, especially on the West Coast, it was really bad. And you know, death row chains were worth a lot of money. So if you could snatch, you know, one of these rappers' chains... You know, nowadays y'all call it clout. Back then, you know, they could flip it and make money off of it. So anyways, he told Tupac, that's the dude. Tupac was like, okay, let's get him. And we've all seen that infamous video of Tupac, big ass Suge Knight, them big ass turkey legs just, oh, oh, kicking the shit out of Orlando. I said, damn, beating his ass in the middle of the MGM casino. I remember when I first went to Vegas, and I went to the MGM, and I went, because I'm such a Tupac fan, I'm like, I went to, like, the security guards. I was like, were you here in 1996? Like, I was doing my own investigation. Can you tell me what happened? And I ended up talking to this dude. He was actually there. And he was, like, an older white guy, and he was telling me about the fight and everything, child. And I was just sitting at the front desk sipping tea, okay? So, you know, they're fighting everything, you know, big old Suge Knight is just kicking them and everything else. And then they leave. But what they didn't realize is that they messed with the wrong crib. And Orlando Anderson had time that day. And so, you know, after he got beat up, he got with his uncle, Keefe D. And instead of Keefe D being a good uncle and saying, you know what, it is what it is. We're not even going to, you know, you, you, as an as a aunt or uncle, you should be, you know, you should want to talk down the youth. Cooler heads are supposed to prevail. But Keefe D was not a good uncle. He was just as ratchet and gangbangerish as his nephew. So they decided to kill Pac. And that is what happened on the Las Vegas Strip. You know, so, and, you know, that was, you know, the night that music died in hip-hop. Um, a lot of people said that Suge Knight was behind it. That was a rumor for a long time. Even today, Suge Knight was trending, and I was cracking up because all you saw was the little kids, all the young babies, like, oh, Suge Knight didn't do it. 
I know he's in jail like, whoo. <laughs> See, Shig Knight tried to tell y'all, like, shut up. Y'all weren't even around in 1996. I can't stand people born in the early 2000s because y'all be the loudest on social media. Y'all were not here. So they're all like, Shook Knight has been exonerated. Okay, all right. You know, ma'am, who was born in 2001. So um, it, it was funny going through the hashtag. Um, people were saying that Puffy's next. <laughs> I was, all day, Puffy was trending, Suge Knight, Biggie Smalls. I literally felt like it was 1996, 1997, 1998 again. Like, I'm like, okay, I feel like I'm like back in high school with some shit, okay? All these names from back then trending. And so um, they're like, yeah, they're coming after you next, Puffy. <laughs> you know this generation, they don't care. So anyhow, um, they killed Pac. People said that Suge Knight set him up because he owed him money. But honestly, you know, if you really think about it, why would you risk yourself? Suge Knight is a big man. Tupac was small. I'm not about to risk, you know, my big ass getting shot too. You know, and he got grazed. So, you know, Orlando, unfortunately, was a good shot. He made sure, you know, the, the majority of the bullets hit Pac. And um, Pac ended up dying. And, you know, it's just been a lot of mystery. So, to all the babies, he's not in Cuba. I don't care what the conspiracy theorists say. Pac died. And his brother, Mo Prem, you know, him and the outlaws, they talked about this years ago. They smoked some of his ashes and all that stuff. His mother, Afini, before she died, rest in peace to Afini, she confirmed her son died so he's not in cuba okay so let's go ahead and i want to play y'all the video and listen closely to what this detective said and this is part of what i was saying in the in my last stream two months ago when we talked about keefe d <sighs> keefe you talk too much you never shut up damn okay so we're gonna watch what the detectives said basically called out keefe d because, you know, I think after a while they're like, well, you know, it's been so much going on. We don't, you know, they, they, you know, they, they just didn't have like enough evidence until Keefe started running his mouth. So let me share my screen. Let me hold on here. Okay. Give me just a second here. Pull this up so y'all can see it. They did a whole uh, press conference. I was here for it. We're going to go ahead and watch this. Some of y'all like when I'm bigger on this screen. Some of y'all like when I'm smaller. So I don't know. I'll do a mixture of both. If y'all complain, I'll make myself smaller. Some people are like, I want to see your reactions. Other people are like, get off the screen. So I don't know. So let's listen to the man. Listen to what he's saying closely. I had time stamped it. I think it was about here. Okay. But it wasn't until 2018 that this case was reinvigorated as additional information came to light related to this homicide. Specifically, Dwayne Davis's own admissions to his involvement in this homicide investigation that he provided to numerous different media outlets. Did y'all hear that? That he provided to numerous media outlets out his own mouth. See, Keefe was feeling that he was bigger than the program and he found out that fat meat is what? Greasy as fuck, okay? We're going to let him keep talking. In our section, we knew at this time that this was likely our last time to take a run at this case to successfully solve this case and bring forth a criminal charge. It was at that time that this case was assigned to Cliff Mogg, a detective within my homicide section. And over the last five years, this, my section worked closely, hand in hand, with the Clark County District Attorney's Office and followed a systematic investigative plan over the last five years. We've conducted countless interviews and corroborated numerous facts that were not only consistent with the crime scene on the night of the incident, but also corroborated and were consistent with the sequence of events that night. This ultimately led to us procuring a search warrant which was executed at Mr. Davis's residence in Henderson, Nevada. And following the execution of that search warrant, in close coordination with the District Attorney's Office, this case was presented to the grand jury, which ultimately led to Davis being indicted on charges of murder. Before I hand it off to the District Attorney's Office, 
I would be remiss if I didn't thank Detective Mogg and all the other detectives that were not only assigned this case and reviewed this case, but all the other detectives from other agencies that assisted us in this investigation. They know who they are, and thank you very much for all the assistance you provided. It does not go unnoticed. And all last right. Thank you, sir. Next. Okay, so y'all heard what the, the copper, what the cop said. Basically, like I've been saying, Keithy D was doing way too much talking. Because um, he was not only on Vlad TV, um, he was on other outlets as well, too. Like, you know, like remember I told y'all there's like a section of like these older guys from back in the day. You know, there's like an old gangbang YouTube clubhouse. And they just sit on like clubhouse and YouTube and talk about all their old dirt. Y'all remember we, we caught them blood slipping at Gonzalez Park in 1992. And they just sit and just tell on themselves. And I remember I had posted one of the arguments on Discord. And the dude was like, that's why when you got shot, you had to wear a shit bag. I'm just like, what is this? <laughs> I don't get it. I think social media is going to be the down. <laughs> it's going to be the downfall of society. I'm like, I get the young people at this point. They just, they don't understand reality. They just feel like, you know, whatever they do in the real world or social media has no consequences. Now you got grown folks, honey, who are our parents' ages, who are grandparents just running their mouth. I would see him on platforms just talking freely. Yeah, me and my nephew Orlando. Yeah, we had something to do with it. Yeah, Tupac thought he was hard. He fought. And I'm just like, does he not think that the statute of limitations won't come back to bite him in the ass? Does he not? Like, if I'm watching this, I'm just a random person. You know, just watching, enjoying, sipping tea. Does he not think the police are watching? Like, y'all make the police's job so easy. All this self-snitching that goes on is ridiculous. Like, like seriously. I mean, I just, it just, it, it's a mess. If you ever go down that rabbit hole of, like, old gangbang YouTube, like... You will be in tears. They be on there arguing, shouting. I'm like, whose granddad is this? Like, we got to do better. We got to do better. You know, so I, for one, as a Tupac fan, I'm like super, super happy that Keefe D is finally getting arrested. You know, that's what he wanted. That's what he was shouting out on, you know, Vlad TV. I don't care if they come get me. I am there all this time in prison. Well, they came and got you. Enjoy. You know, so it just, it's, it's sad because again, like when I think about it, like, you know, I was like a teen, I think like 13 or something, like when Pac died. So yeah, when you're like a kid, you think like 25 is so old, like, you know, dang, like you think like that's grown. And then I remember when I turned 25, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like the same age when Tupac died. It's like, I, I got a lot of life to live. Like, this is so like, when you really think about it. That's not enough time. 25 years, you know, the person you are at 25 is not the person that you're going to be at 35. It's not the person you're going to be at 40, 45. So it's really sad that his life was cut short because I just feel like he was going through his immaturity stage and still trying to find himself. But had he lived to be, I think he'd be like 50 something now. You know, he, he could have done just so many things. You know what I'm saying? Just countless things because he was a visionary. You know, so, um, man, rest in peace, Pac. Like, I'm, I'm happy that he's finally just getting some justice. But, again, a lot of us been known. Because Keefe D's been talking for, like, literally, like, 15 plus years. But, so, I think because he has so many deals, they did, like, a lot of undercover deals with him. You know, just to get information on other stuff that was going on. Because he was, like, really heavy in the drug game. And I just think he thought that those deals that he signed with, like, uh, what is his name? Craig, uh, Greg Caden and those other officers, I think he thought that that was going to protect him. But no, you know, when you're literally mocking the police and, you know, confessing to a murder and thinking that they're not going to do anything about it, after a while, you're poking the bear. And the bear finally was like, fuck it, go get him. You know what I'm saying? So the whole situation is insane. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so tell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.